Welcome everyone. We, we have a lot of illness going around right now, and, um, but this event is being recorded, so those who, I know there are several people would like to be here and are not feeling well, so everyone will get, get the recording. Uh, I just wanted to uh, introduce Maria Gonzalez and her mother. Maria works, as many of you know, works in our, um, what's that long name of the office? Yeah. <laughs> The, the uh, parent and family uh, engagement and then the international admissions. Parent and family <laughs> engagement and international admiss admissions are on uh, Maria Gonzalez and her mother uh, Nicole Gonzalez will be speaking to us today about her um, experience as a, as a young girl growing up in France during the uh, German occupation of France during mm -hmm. World War II and also um, uh, her um, experience as an immigrant from France to the to the United States. So uh, we're, we're happy to hear from her. Uh, Nicole was born in, in and raised in France and her family uh, owned a, a, a tobacco cafe that was frequented by the German um, occupiers during a World War II, a popular cafe with the Germans. And uh, she has a lot of stories to uh, tell about that. I don't want to steal her phone during the, in the introduction. And uh, uh, she met her husband, John, an American, and came to uh, the United States, first to Colorado and then to Teleco Plains, Tennessee. So please welcome Nicole Gonzalez, and I will give you the floor. Thank you very much, and I uh, appreciate being asked. Uh, I feel I'm getting a little too old to do all that recollection. I'm not sure I remember exactly, uh, perfectly. I just, uh, before I start, I want to say it's so important to keep the stories of our families, to record them, you know, to, uh, to ask the questions when we can. Um, I have had a lot of questions about those years uh, when mom and dad, uh, especially during the war, those very special stories. And uh, it seems that I, these questions came to me when I could no longer get the answers. Um, being separated, uh, not being able to go back to the front except uh, every two years. Um, their health uh, was in question then. And uh, so today I regret that I have not written down all these things while my parents were alive. Uh, my father particularly would have had a lot to say. And somehow for a long time I didn't know what he was doing um, regarding the German occupation. Uh, until much later when, uh, uh, as I said, I could not ask, I could not have the answers to all my questions. But I, I do uh, recollect quite a, quite a few. So I want to say that I was born in a little town named Longy, which is north of the Loire River. I don't know if some of you have traveled to France. But if you remember about World War II, the Loire River was really the DMZ between occupied France and, and free France. And so we were in a little town, which was about seven, eight miles, maybe, from the Loire River. Um, my parents owned a tobacco, what we call Café Tabac, uh, where we could have found newspapers, uh, uh, anything to do with, uh, you know, writing, uh, letters, and so forth, which was the only way to communicate in those days. So their store was a pretty busy one. Uh, at the same time, if you know French culture a little bit, uh, um, they they sold wine, and uh, but anything else, you could have bought water, you could have, I'm not even sure if they sold water, but uh, <laughs> you, 
you could have had other drinks if you had wanted to. And it was, it had really become the place where people were maybe getting away from the uh, stress of the day and uh, with the German occupation, um, there was a lot of stress. There were, as you know, uh, um, the uh, food was rationed. Um, I remember going to the grocery store. Um, I, was, I was born in 39. I should have started there um, in July. And uh, the war started in September. So my father left and uh, did not come back for a year. And uh, my mother, therefore, was left to have the store, to take care of the store, with the help of my grandmother and then raising me at the same time. And there's, um, I'm, I'm going to have a hard time following her. I have plenty to say, but I'm not sure I'm going to follow this. But I just, uh, um, that brings me to a point where to add to, I started with mom, but uh, to, to uh, add to my mother's uh, stress of the day, uh, one day she said uh, one of the uh, uh, authorities in the town came and said, uh, we're going to have to ask you to give asylum to two German soldiers. I think it was two. Um, and this happened because a year before, in 1938, uh, Belgium was invaded. And so as a result of that, people were leaving I mean, we, we've watched the Ukrainians leave their uh, place that is bombed and so forth. And so uh, many of the Belgian people were looking for asylum where they could. And so my parents had an extra uh, large room. And uh, I don't know how the conversation started, but anyway, they said, if you need um, for us to help you with this project of finding uh, places for them to lodge, you can have, a, you know, we can take one family. And so there was a Belgian family uh, who stayed with them, I don't know how long. It may have been a matter of three, four months. But it left their uh, facility open so that when the German authorities turned to the, to the city, because they had a lodging problem, uh, they were into in a, uh, uh, it was a building that was used as a community center. Um, they, they were plays, if there was a play, if there was a concert, it was given into this building. So as a result, it left them open to be, not only to ask if they cared to, but they would have imposed these German soldiers. I don't know if some of you uh, read a bread uh, nightingale by Christy Hanna. And uh, um, the, one of the, her characters uh, has a problem with a I think he's a German officer staying in their house. And it reminded me, I had forgotten about that, but it reminded me as I read it, because I thought, surely she wouldn't have had to put up with that. But uh, that's what they wanted to do with my mom. And my mom being my mom, she, she worked her way out of this. So among the uh, customers who came to the store, was a lawyer who I think gave her a lot of help for that. And uh, I don't know how long they stayed, but then it must have been maybe a night or two, but they were out. And uh, Mom, let me, because they're, they're saying that. I, yeah, so I want to make sure we, we've got to follow the PowerPoint. So that was her parents. Uh, and what this is, is Sonia is where, is the title we say she's 
went from somewhere in France to Tower of the City. So this is the one of the better pictures of somewhere and you're seeing the castle in Saint Pierre. And then she got to talk about that, of course, that's her parents. And then we wanted to show you the map uh, at the very beginning so you'd know where somewhere is. And then um, right here, I did an arrow so you could see where my mother uh, was born. And as you can see, it's not too far from somewhere. And then uh, that's, that's Longy where she was born, that's the church. And that's her little that girl in front of that, that cafe, tobacco cafe that she was talking about. I was, an, I was an only child, so I think I fell pretty well during those days, and apparently they had dumped me on the floor. There was, there was no traffic. I think it's the mailman who is talking to me. The post office was just at the corner. The butcher shop was on the left-hand side of the store. And uh, uh, the doctor was a little bit further down on the left. Anyway, it was a small community. Uh, and those rooms you were talking about, I guess, were on top. But uh, yes, on top was this room that was yes. you know, yes. so a little like, bit later. Can you turn the lights? That's a little bit Yeah, I thought about that, the lights. I think it was on that side. Because you can see a lot there. better. I, I, yes. yes, thank you. <laughs> Especially right here, yeah, where it's coming. Yeah, a lot better. Yeah, so now, yeah, you can see, okay, we're, no, we're not there yet. <laughs> so, um, I'll, I'll take, uh, so, Pat, yeah, you talk a little bit about, if you want to talk about, Pat, there. Yes. Okay. Um, my father came back there for 1940, when, uh, after General Petain, um, uh, yeah. What surrendered. So uh, he got a job uh, with the electric company. Um, I don't know which started what. Um, the store would have probably occupied him. And I don't know if at that time he had been in contact with the uh, resistance that was uh, forming. Uh, but apparently, in this, with this job with the electric uh, company, uh, he would go and read meters, therefore getting acquainted with farms, um, the countryside. And he, uh, found himself involved in what we, I call that maybe the pioneers of a D-Day, in that there were some Canadian paratroopers that had been uh, parachuted south of the Loire and make it, making their way um, timidly uh, to, uh, to not to attract attention. So it would be, his job would have been to find a farm for one of those Canadian uh, um, soldiers to, um, to spend a night uh, after riding all day and uh, getting a uh, uh, maybe a bicycle repair, because they had to do that on a bicycle. Um, anyway, to provide everything that this person needed. And of course, you had to know. You had to get to know these people. You had to trust them to do that. So my father spent uh, quite a bit of time away from home, because he would be uh, Find, trying to find these farms. Well, he would find them on the job, but um, he would meet with this person. It was, it was a single affair. It was one guy on a bicycle being able to speak French, uh, dressed like a French person, and just riding a bicycle, which was such a common uh, way of uh, moving around 
in France. I don't know if you've been to France, but it's not unusual to find people even my age uh, going down to the store on their own bicycles. And so, um, so my father was involved in the in, uh, in resistance. Um, I don't know if he would, he would have been part of um, what would have been his position? I haven't studied the, the resistance in itself. It was a very complicated uh, um, um, group that had echelons. And uh, so among, among those who were helping was a, a lady by the name of Yvonne Compeyre, and she was a, a friend of ours. And uh, she also had a store. And she was not very nice with the enemy. Um, I wanted to tell you that in our store, German soldiers came in uh, every day. They came in for a newspaper, uh, a pen, maybe a glass of wine. Uh, but they were um, a regular sight. And uh, mother always tried to be, um, you know, you had to be able to contain um, your feelings. You could not show um, feelings that were at attracting their attention and their wrong lead up to something you would regret. We, we, had, we had quite a few of those. Um, show of uh, patriotism or whatever it was, and it usually ended in tragedy. And so uh, I'm, I think you put in there the, the story of this a woman who came in one day, my mother was by herself, and she uh, openly, uh, there were people in the store, and she openly told my mother she, she was coming for the suitcase. And at that point, my mother asked her, can you follow me? She took her to the back of the store. And she said, what's the matter with you? You know, uh, if, if you have anything to ask uh, of that nature especially, she said, well, my husband told me to get it. She said, well, I'm not questioning that, but it's to, it's to be allowed. Everybody could have heard it. You've got to be discreet. And it was true, my father was keeping tracks in the attic. Once in a while, when the door was open, I would uh, venture out. And I loved to go in the attic um, because of the uh, language that was used. The radio was on, uh, what do you call that? Not the radio, but I, to be able to pick up uh, that kind of coded message. And, um, I, I know that my dad would uh, uh, hide a uh, uh, suitcase, I mean, a, 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 a tracks that were given out uh, later on. So anyway, I've lost my way. Well, uh, yeah, I'll put it in the slide. Yeah, yeah. um, even, uh, even compare this lady here is uh, um, you put singers from Paris, oh no, where is she? Oh, family friend. Um, yes, I was talking about this person. Uh, she ended up uh, being arrested, and she ended up at Buchen Ball uh, and died. Uh, so, um, you, you know, you had to be very careful how you handle the enemy. You could be very patriotic but not be obvious. Mom, if you want, please go ahead and look at the, uh, and just, yeah. And that way you get in the book, so that you have to look at that since it's such a The Germans, of course, uh, would tell us to, uh, they had a curfew at 9 o'clock. And uh, I remember uh, my mother uh, had closed the store one night but somebody had brought her a chicken. And uh, so at 9 o'clock, 
But as she was still plucking the feathers, she had put a newspaper around the light so that we can be seen the uh, German headquarters was just down the road from the kitchen. Uh, and by the way, I, I suppose you know that the French uh, uh, combined the store and the, uh, the place of habitation. You know, you live, you live uh, on the, uh, uh, where you, the store is up front, you're, you're, your house is in the back and the bar, but you, you, you're right there. So she had taken uh, the chicken uh, in the kitchen and she was plucking the, the feathers. And um, we heard that's all the, she put a newspaper and really thought that she could finish the job before she would be noticed. But we heard a pounding on the door. And that incident I remember very well. I was about four years old, and I remember the fear. You know, there was just something about that harsh pounding on the. Uh, um, at night, they pulled up the, um, like the shutters uh, around the uh, windows of the store, and so it made a metallic sound. And I know a mom probably figured that she, they had seen the light. So they, the two German soldiers came in and uh, um, talked in German, of course, and of course she understood she needed to cut off the light. So we lived under, you know, that kind of pressure. Um, the Germans themselves, and this was, I think, the old Germans, the very first ones uh, who came and uh, occupied us. Um, they were not the SS at that time, and I think they, they didn't treat us uh, badly. If you, you know, if you, if you uh, did what they told you to do, uh, they, they were that aggressive at that point. They would take your car if you, if, um, you were silly enough to uh, to get your car uh, park it on the side of the road while they they would take it from you. Um, it wasn't unusual if they needed a bicycle, they would have stopped somebody and you know got, they'd get the bicycle and off they went. So um, it, it, it they did what they wanted to do, but um, if you treated them. Uh, well enough if you respected them somewhat. Uh, you know, they, they usually left you alone. Mom said she never had a very much trouble in the store. They would, uh, uh, they would see me and they'd say, well, I've got a little girl back home about the same age. You know, I think a lot of them didn't know what to come either. Um, but uh, anyway, that's the way war is. Uh, um, the G. Um, the third one. The, uh, uh, the hostages, uh, she put the uh, hostages taken in Sumir, uh, talking about this exteriorization of your, of your anger. Um, there were a couple of young men in Sumir who uh, wanted to show um, a, you know, their anger and, and I thought they would take on a, a, the arms if they had to. So they went into an attic uh, near a very busy uh, uh, street and they shot at a jeep, an Amer a German jeep with, uh, I think there may have been three or four occupants in the jeep. I think it killed one. And so um, I'm sure they uh, caught those guys. And on top of that, um, maybe a half a mile down the road, they arrested uh, 10 people who unfortunately happened to pass by. Um, 
they had them dig, uh, you know, uh, a hole, uh, a grave, and then they shot them. So they were definitely showing who was the boss. And taking on the, uh, the, the desire to, to show a little bit of uh, muscle during a war that uh, pre prevents you from really doing that and uh, doesn't give you the, the arms, uh, you know, the, uh, the equipment and, uh, and people to help you uh, uh, to do that. Um, it, it was really foolish, but it happened all the time. So and you said one of was afraid of many. Well, she was. Well, no, we. But we knew her. She was on her way her son. Her son was in jail on the other side of the Loire, and she would go regularly uh, every week to take him uh, uh, extra food, uh, clean clothes, and she was one of the ten that was. Uh, that was shot. And uh, yeah. so we thought of that young man uh, many times. Yes, did he, did he to the other person? Um, yes, when, uh, when it was, uh, well, uh, following the day, following the uh, invasion of Normandy, of course, we knew that the, the, the Americans were going to come. And uh, one day they, we were told uh, the Americans would be uh, passing through Longy. And so uh, we uh, were little, practiced our RV, and I can still see the, uh, the jeep coming down the road, the street, and uh, our excitement and, uh, at the, the site. And the cafe. And uh, so they 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 stopped. Uh, yeah, they stopped, and of course they saw us. So we were a group of kids. Uh, gave us uh, Hershey bars. I know now they were Hershey bars. To me, they were in a brown package. I remember that brown cardboard like package. And uh, but we were anxious to open it up and, and eat. Uh, something we were a little bit quiet on. I, I didn't. My mother always said uh, you preferred a, a, a pickle to a, to a piece of candy, but uh, you know, I didn't have a choice. So she gave me pickles instead of giving me pickles. So, but um, she, uh, so I remember that excitement. And my dad, uh, to everybody who was in the store, they came out. and. Uh, Oh, come in, we're so glad to see you, of course. And uh, my dad opened uh, several bottles of champagne. And um, we, were, we were certainly happy. And to this day, we are very uh, appreciative of, uh, of the, uh, the help they came in to, to give us. And, uh, and I know many lost their lives. And that's a, a very war is a is a very uh, painful um, thing. And uh, but uh, yeah, I remember the uh, the excitement. We, we were really. Uh, uh, I was you know I wasn't understanding uh, what was taking place really, but. I, you feel the mood, you feel the, uh, you, you hear comments, and we knew that was had to be a very special place. Mom, you want to talk about that? Because that's pretty cool to operate. You want to make sure I bring that up. Yes, uh, that was uh, very well. Um, the, the mayor of Longueuil was the, uh, he uh, appreciated good music. He loved opera. opera and, uh, so uh, in Paris, they had uh, uh, closed everything. The opera house was closed. Uh, um, the movie houses were closed. Uh, there was nothing going on for the, the entertainment of people. So the mayor uh, had a big house. And uh, since he knew that the, the um, 
opera members uh, were having to leave. He said, if some of you are interested, um, I can uh, open my house for you. And but as a form of payment, it'd be nice if once in a while you would entertain us. And my father and mother loved music, and so um, that was something we looked forward to when they would put on, uh, you know, some of the major operas. We couldn't have better. These were these were the top. It was our met. Uh, we, we had the best of the best, and so I was raised on, uh, you know, listening to Verdi and uh, you know Puccini and. So um, it happened several times a year, and that was really something to look forward to. The Germans did love music, and at the same time, of course, they were they were on the front row. So uh, they benefited from it. Uh, the days of retribution. This was. Uh, after the war, I guess it's like any war or any revolution. There's some retribution taking place. And it's not always pretty. Um, Mom has always told me the one of the worst days of the war was when the women that were suspected to have slept with the Germans were paraded in the street after they cut off their hair. It was, she said that was a very sad sight. Mm -hmm. And in France, we, uh, every window has a set of shadows. So in, in response, everybody that was, uh, that lodged around this parade uh, shut their shadows as a sign of, uh, you know, they weren't looking. So, uh, anyway, that was a time of uh, vengeance. Most of the time, those who had relationships with Germans um, did that more for a pair of holes or mm -hmm. for food to, to go on the table. I don't think many were engaged in any, uh, anything else, but yeah, that was the past. This is my, uh, it's my godmother holding me. I was an only child, so. In front of that, that's the tobacco? Yes, in front of the store. And then switch to. Yes, Saumur, which is where I went to school, after my, uh, well, a few years after the war, my parents saw the store and uh, went back to the family farm, which was just a couple of miles, is still a couple of miles from uh, downtown Saumur. Um, Saumur, you saw the, you saw the castle, it's a, uh, has a famous cavalry school. Uh, and the cadets in uh, June, June of 1940 uh, were still uh, fighting. Uh, I think it was the day uh, after the, uh, the declaration that France was, uh, was not fighting anymore. But they, they, they continued their fight valiantly. And uh, 2,500 of them versus 10,000, and eventually 40,000. It was, uh, it was, it was yes, correct. They wouldn't give up. They, uh, they, they said he knew the story of the, the German uh, general was so almost taken by their courage that he let the young ones go. He just, he just mm -hmm. said, go back to your moms. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. They were young. They were young yeah. lieutenants. Um, we have a famous cavalry school where Chapel de Gaulle and um, a lot of the officers uh, paid camp. Yeah, he was there. And uh, we do have, a, uh, we have the National School of Equitation, 
um, we went to the ride, the best riders. Uh, uh, they always participate in the Olympics. And, uh, they're very good riders. Um, I don't know if they're second to the uh, famous uh, uh, school uh, in, Aust in uh, Aust Australia. Yeah. And so we was awarded La Croix de Guerre uh, because of this resistance they provide. And, uh, and this, uh, we have the, the Cabot Noir, we call it. Uh, uh, generally speaking, it's around 12 famous uh, riders who perform uh, every summer. Um, and do fantastic work. Um, if you come to uh, Saumur in July, uh, that's how yes. they yeah. exhibit their, their we were We were fortunate as children. My grandmother did take us when we were young. Mm -hmm. uh, those are hard tickets to get because people come from all over the world because they're not from the best in the world. So uh, it's incredible what they do with the horses. They'll all go up at the same time. They'll all get back out at the same time. Uh, they do all these crisscrosses, all these patterns. And at the carousel, they start with all motorcycles. Motorcycles doing all this. The military guys all getting like 10 on one bike. Uh, all these stunts. And then they do the same with Jeeps. And then, of course, everybody's waiting for the horses. So the horses are always the last part. And in fact, this picture right here, that was with uh, Casey Cobb when we took a group. My cousin, my team, helped us get tickets to come to this show. So I actually took that when we were there. That's about a dozen. Yeah. They're very exceptional mm -hmm. riders and exceptional horses, too. Yeah. And this so, is the, the castle. And, uh, I love this is for the view from the castle. Um, I got that this year, actually this summer. Um, so we, there was a festival going on outside the castle. And then this is St. Pierre, which is the cross. It's all, it's that there was a competition for the top of the steeple of the church to match the top of the castle. That's why it's so high up there. Um, and then uh, there's another church that's very popular, that's San Nicolau over here. Or we, people would say San Nicolau. And down below, and that's, the Loire. that's the Loire River, which is almost dry at this point. So it's strange because so many people died going back to the war trying to cross the Loire River. Uh, it was dangerous because because of the enemy at the time. And uh, we had people who would do that. Uh, they knew when was a good time, when was not. And they were good, uh, well, pastor, we used to call them. And today, you could just go across uh, on the sand. And, uh, this still has water, but it's the other side. I didn't have a picture of that to show, but there's an island. So Mira actually has an island in the, the, the south of Mira, I guess, if you look, whatever. And then, so we have two bridges. So you can't see the bridge on the other side, and that's what has dried up. Literally, we could just walk across it. it it's unbelievable the drought they're having. And that used to be full of water, and they would just walk across the first part. Now, this still has a lot of water. It never goes too, too low, but the other side's dried up. And the bridges, uh, that was another thing about the war. Uh, that's the, uh, that was the aim of the uh, um, British, uh, British Air Force. Yeah, I've got that on the right Train yeah. station and, uh, and bridges, of course, to stop the enemy from moving. Uh, so, but we saw, uh, I remember the bombardment of the uh, train station in Longue, in my hometown. Uh, that's probably the most scared I was. Because uh, I was so scared of airplanes. Uh, I grew up with this fear. I would just, uh, I would hide when I would hear planes, because to me it sounded, it, it, uh, you know, it was a presumption of uh, something bad. Bombardment. Uh, so, yeah. Crossing the Loire, that was definitely uh, very 
dangerous thing to do. And um, you, uh, you mentioned also that Somero celebrates Memorial Day. American. Because one American soldier from what, World War yeah. One? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. And I got a picture. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. That is his grave. And we were, what's awesome is Casey took us on the trip again, my cousin arranged for us to meet the mayor. She worked for the, really for the mayor. And so, so we were, so she arranged for us to take part in this ceremony. So we got to, they asked us to sing the, our national anthem. And they played the French national anthem. And then Jacob, we selected Jacob, I don't know how he got picked, maybe Casey did, but Jacob Kamer, who was, worked in our office of admissions, he uh, got to lay the wreath for, on behalf of the Americans. They asked him to lay the wreath instead of a Frenchman. They said, since you guys are here, we're going to let you do it. So it's really, really awesome. So there's more pictures. I think there's a picture of the whole group. Uh, I couldn't find them. I did take, you know, I would get thousands and thousands of pictures. I loved English in school, and uh, so um, I went to England and tried to perfect my, my, my English. And uh, uh, anyway, that was uh, that was great, and I had a great time, and uh, I haven't regretted it at all. And when I got back, I uh, that's my link with with America. Uh, because uh, the Americans, uh, as you know, under the NATO agreement, uh, installed several uh, bases, military bases, uh, whether they were in the Air Force or in the Army. Um, and uh, they were looking for people who could speak uh, English uh, you know, in order to run the uh, the uh, installations you needed, uh, you needed interpreters, you needed uh, people who could write English. And so I got a job as soon as I got back from England. And of course, the rest is history. I met my husband. I did want to mention that we had, Mama has a photo. It's a shame. It's like an 8 by 10. We all remembered it because it's amazing. It's Queen Elizabeth with the people that she stayed with. Uh, she probably visited Strucker and Plan Haven and so he was mayor at the time. So they, and so it's an awesome picture of Queen Elizabeth. We can't find it. I'm very upset that we can't find it. So, yeah. so <laughs> I don't know what that. So, okay. And that's mom in England. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. mm -hmm. I can't get it to oh, there we go. That's what we want to pick it up. Okay. And so, uh, and of course, Maria, my uh, first uh, daughter was born in Chino. Uh, the uh, American hospital was in Chino. I don't know if you like history or not, but Chino uh, is where uh, Joan of Arc, uh, you know, the Joan of Arc went to the king and uh, asked for an army. <laughs> And he was in Chino, and he thought, well, that's a crazy girl. We're just going to run a, have a, a little fun with her. And so he supposedly dressed up as uh, somebody in the court, and somebody else was wearing the uh, kingly uh, outfit. <laughs> and uh, but Joan of Arc was not to be fooled. She went straight to the king. So anyway, the rest. And now she knows. But is interesting. If you ever come to the Loire River, Loire area, the, if you want to see the Loire castles, which are very famous, um, go to Chinon and walk down the the the, 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 the 
town oh, of Shin, with the yeah. narrow, narrow streets yeah. and uh, um, houses dating from the uh, from the Middle Ages. Uh, yeah. it's, it's really an interesting, and I understand there's somebody from uh, from this area who runs a restaurant in Chino. Oh, <laughs> so that would be the next uh, to go there. Uh, yes. and it's also now a huge nuclear plant. I don't know if you know that, but France per capita is one of the big, most uh, powerful of all the countries when it comes to nuclear, which is nuclear plants all over. So uh, there's a huge plant. In fact, we can see the smoke or something they're doing, whatever it is they're doing, something goes up and we can see it from where we live in so here. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, the rest of the In 1966, Charles de Gaulle pulled out of the uh, NATO uh, agreement arrangement and thought we could, uh, we could run a show by ourselves. And so, all the all the bases were closed. And so 1966 made a difference. My, my husband wouldn't have minded staying uh, in France maybe for a little while. So that would have changed completely our uh, personal history. And uh, but it uh, uh, we were he was sent back here and. Uh, Okay. This is where, that was my first uh, arrival in 1966. And uh, yeah. raising the children and uh, uh, coming to Teleco Plains because he had a sister living in Teleco. And he uh, thought it was a nice little town uh, after he traveled over the world. So, uh, People always ask me, how on earth did you guys end up Teleco Plains? Because if anybody knows Teleco, how small it is, <laughs> we're shocked that we even knew that it existed. And, but that's how it was. It's because of my dad's sister, my Aunt Dorothy, uh, married a man from Benton, and then he got a job in Teleco, and that's what happened. And so my dad came and looked at it and loved it, and that's the furniture. Furniture? Oh, it, yeah, it was the Teleco Manufacturing Company. Yeah, that's it. Became Carlwood, I think, after, but yeah. Yes. At least Michelle was on one board. Yeah. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. so this is there's my, my dad. Why is it not? And that, my dad's carrying the American flag. And we just had to show you, Mama. She was yes. asked to speak about this at Temple Plains Library. <laughs> so, uh, my, my mother would write to me about twice a month since uh, I was an only child. Uh, I realized that uh, uh, we needed connection. We needed, we needed to keep it up. So I would write twice a month. And uh, she would use every, every space. Uh, I mean, it, it, it was... Back. Well, it, it was a newspaper, literally, she would, uh, she would talk about uh, the events uh, that went on in France, and uh, she would make comments as to what was going on here, and so uh, during the COVID uh, uh, retreat, uh, I thought, I'm going to reread Ron's letters. That's just a small portion, but uh, I've got lots of... Uh, and I, it was, it was, for me, it was reliving the time that I was raising the, the girls. Because uh, that's what we were talking about, you know. She'd say, um, well, how is Maria's uh, um, not broken, but you had twisted your ankle or something. And I thought, oh, I forgot that. <laughs> but it was a small detail. But, but it was things that she was reviving these uh, years of the past, and uh, oh, it was almost like a pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. It really was. So and the last part. I'm so very simple. And the last part, the the, the cultural differences. Uh, I think I've still uh, I've kept my accent for one thing. I never lost it. 
But uh, I think I've always kept a little bit of the French culture in me. Um, I had uh, several things. I had to get used to the accent. Uh, my husband was from uh, Colorado, and I didn't have any trouble uh, understanding him. But when I came uh, to tell him, well, I had a little bit of a problem. And uh, you know, that's fine uh, now, but by all means. And they're, they're just uh, good, sweet people. Yeah. They, they, uh, somebody told me one day, uh, they don't like foreigners. And I said, well, I'm definitely in the wrong place. <laughs> I didn't know what else to expect, and, you know, but it, it wasn't like that. Uh, they, they were, they were kind, good. they were very welcoming, and uh, so. But the Southern accent was something to get used to. Uh, the school system really gave me a, a time. Um, completely different from the French system. Uh, um, more relaxed, the social life that you have in the school, the sports. Um, I, I was completely ignorant. Uh, she was the same how mad she got when I was a cheerleader. She did not get cheerleading. Oh. At all. <laughs> and then she got through that, and the baseball team voted on fat girls. And so I had to come in and tell her I was a fat girl. And that just threw her over the edge. She just blew up, thought, what on earth is this? <laughs> Yes, I my dad had to come in and say, "Okay." Yeah, and I, I regret not fitting in, not not uh, making that. Uh, you know, when you live uh, in a foreign country, you have to do uh, the foreign thing. I mean, that's uh, you can't live your own. You know, say I will retain my my culture. You, you've got to to mix. You've got to to to, to make an effort. And I, I, I admit that uh, where the school system was, I don't know why. Well, for one thing, you were not used to, Mama would hear that, oh, well, this school's better, or the schools are better here, and that was a foreign concept, because in France it wasn't better. Just because you went to this school, and this one might have been private, and this one was but there wasn't a difference, so she had a hard time, because we heard that all the time, and it's true that we would, I mean, it is, it's just a fact. I, mean, I think we grow up here, we know well, they, that. In um, France, they cut yes. the pie in equal, yeah. you know, she pieces. Didn't understand that. And so I, I just I, couldn't understand that. I mean, Mom went to fight for telephone even books, high school, even for books. Even books. She went to the board and made the paper. My mom was a, it was there in the headline of the Monroe County Advocate, but she got tired, because I got used books. I would know that a person graduated from Madisonville like 10 years ago. My mother was like, wow. Well, that's not the problem. We have pages, pages, pages missing. <laughs> I mean, uh, ripped out. Mm -hmm. was, uh, and so, but she went and fought for Telco. So anyway, uh, Telco started getting better books after mom. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I had the hard time with that. And you know, the things like in Telco, you know, we they were very, very friendly. I mean, we love. We certainly she she's yeah. Telco now. But I mean, it, they were you know, sweetie, honey, uh, asking questions that mom said the French would see as very. Oh my goodness, that's too personal. You don't ask a stranger. That and that, but the story we've got to tell Mama, you got to tell is the shower. Oh yeah, <laughs> I tell her. Well, I mean, you've got to get used to the uh, to the uh, expressions, the language uh, expressions. Uh, when I was, uh, it's when I was expecting Maria, I was in the waiting room, not the waiting room. Yeah, yeah, uh, in, the, yeah in the waiting room. Maria, Maria, yeah. Maria, yeah. No, it was, it was for you. It was for you. No, that's when yeah, I heard France. the word shower. I yeah, it's so many of my aunt Dorothy. No, at the American hospital. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, the women were asking each other, have they given you your shower? <laughs> and I, I'm not worried about it. What? <laughs> that's right. I, I was <laughs> really, I thought, Anyway, you should worry about it for a couple of weeks until somebody finally realized what she thought it meant. I'm like, oh, no, 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 it's a party. It's not a physical shower. She was wondering, what is this custom? That they give pregnant women a shower. And she didn't know. She was straight. It's just like, what is this American custom? So we've told that story. I will admit, I did think it was when you got here to the same time. I did not know. No, it was no, no. It was, anyway, it was yeah. in France. The, the graveyard shift worried me, too. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would say, what is that? What are they doing? 
Ja, ja, genau. Ja, this happens. Uh, and, and also, even in church, because mom was used to Catholic, very quiet, you don't know, you know, because I remember if I moved, my grandma was like this, and you were afraid, <laughs> you were afraid to move at all. And so she had to visit Telco Place First Baptist when there was a revival. And we all know and love Judy Mills. That's not the best thing he's he died not too long ago, but he was very charismatic and he went screaming up and down. And my mom literally, she testified at a Sweetwater abuse rally as we were in high school they had her speak and she told me she thought it was the devil of devil worship <laughs> she didn't want to think of it and brother Jimmy Millsaps was sitting on the front row and he was like bless the Lord but yeah he was still it didn't matter he was like they, they all knew mom by that point but she admitted it and I was scared I remember scared me to death like what is this it took mom a while she had to go to Sunday night before it's a lot quieter before she would go <laughs> Oh, hey, my mom's very active now. I'm just saying that's how it was in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then the size of the country, you've got to talk about it. Yeah, the size of the country is very. Uh, it's very difficult when you come from country, uh, you know, like ours, the size of ours. We're not even as big as Texas. And uh, the first, uh, my concept was. Uh, of mining, mileage, mileage. Uh, that was, uh, well, you don't go shopping 15 miles away from your house. Uh, it's just down the road. You know, just, uh, I, so I, I would, any time when they'd say, well, come on, we'll go shopping here or there, and uh, well, how far is it? Oh. And of course, you always speak in, in uh, time, but time it takes you from one place to the other. Mm -hmm. You don't mention miles. You don't say, it's 15 miles. Usually, you say, oh, it takes me 20 minutes, 15 minutes. You know, that was another thing to get used to. But, but really, this is a, a large country. This is a big country. And I will tell you, it was kind of tough on us because we would want to go somewhere, and my goodness, Knoxville, it might as well have been five hours away. I mean, <laughs> she just treated anything. It was even 45 minutes. Like, we'd go to Athens. That was a big trip. And we're like, Mom, it's not that far. 45 minutes. But see, for her, yeah. So, <laughs> when we were younger, it did affect us because she didn't, she didn't like those long trips. So, that's it. That's, and there you go. Aww. And that's home now. So, <laughs> it has been beautiful. Yeah. This, this the fall, that's been beautiful. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. I've got a lot of pictures with that one. Mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of people know that's Ballroom Falls. It doesn't have the concrete bridge in front of it. No, no, no. That's, that's getting ready to change. It's still there, but that's getting ready to change. They're changing that. Are they? Oh, well, that's like, I have hundreds of years of photos, yeah. and now I have that concrete. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a good friend of mine whose daughter got married there and made the national news because it was frozen. Yeah. And she had a wedding pitch, uh, wedding photos mm -hmm. made there. And it was all over every magazine, Good Morning America, Today Show. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's, uh, so I guess then we'll just see if people have questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions? Did you find the people welcoming, welcoming you? Uh, uh, yes, and I think that's why they were asking me so many questions. <laughs> they were asking yeah. 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 yeah, very, very personal, and I thought, well, what is this? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, you're but, interesting. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, but I realized they wanted to know me. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, the end of, well, it was really the early 67. It was January 67. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we did, they, 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 you know, we were worried. I mean, there were some issues. When she first there. there was actually a, a cross -party. Because, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because of somebody's cross son, yes. Because well, my son had, life, had, had married or was dating in Iran. Oh, yeah. that's all. Yeah, and so mom got scared there for a while. But they actually were very good because my aunt is pretty dark. My dad's sister, she's darker than my dad. And 
So, you know, we, but they were great to us, absolutely great to us. And my dad became pretty popular. He was a bunny. He liked to tell a lot of jokes and fun. He knew a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, no, as far as I, you know, you learn to, to accept uh, uh, a way. I, I, you've got to make the effort. Uh, after all, I'm the foreigner and I come here and so. You know, it's not up to you to make the effort, when mm -hmm. it's up to me. But, so there were a lot of things I didn't know um, mm -hmm. before I came. And then I should have done my homework, maybe mm -hmm. a little, a little yeah. more. But you know, people would talk about so, how big America was, but until you come here, you realize, mm -hmm. yes, this is... I mean, look how far you are just within the state of Tennessee. It takes like, seven hours to go. <laughs> oh my goodness. The <laughs> wrong state is big. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wow, it's, it's, a, it's a big, yes, it's a big place. Mm -hmm. Big place. And the misconceptions we have, you know, we, we go back home and uh, we had a neighbor. Uh, he'd always ask those questions. Well, I bet you get a lot of uh, holidays. Uh, you're off a lot uh, in America. And, and I'd say, you know what? I've never seen people work so hard. You, you have what? I mean, a lot of people have one week off. You know, those who work uh, in certain places, they have one week off, the week of the fourth. And he'd say, no, you're joking. Tell me. And, uh, that's, no, that's, that's the truth. You have to give the French, they get five and a half. Right. No, I'm saying it's a work schedule. Yeah, it is a two o'clock. Everyone gets five and a half weeks. Oh. Yeah, vacation. Wow. Yeah, that doesn't include holidays. Wow. I mean, that's, that's just the vacation time. So they work 30, down to 35, 35 hours a week, I think. Well, there's three weeks you have to take as a book. Because they say anybody who works has to be off for three weeks. That's just for the mind, for the okay. So you don't mind. And then, and then you get to two weeks. You get a section off. Section off. So could they call it the grand vacances? I know the great vacations because there are times we go like oh no, we're gonna shut down and it'd be a month. Sometimes places just shut down for a month. Head to four weeks, yeah. Oh, so they don't even like rotate their staff, they literally shut yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, yeah, they'll shut down. No, they're shut down. They, they, they shut down, yes. Well, yeah. like, for instance, uh, you know, bake, uh, not bakers, but, yeah. but the, the boulangerie that uh, do the bread, and, you know, every day people go and get their bread. Uh, so if you close, you've got to do it in connection with the other bread makers. Right. <laughs> no, you can because do that. You'd have a, a crisis all of a sudden yeah. if everybody. No, yeah, you know, right. the French have to have that bread. That bread. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. so when you moved to Telco, did your husband, did he feel like he fit right in or was it a culture yes. for him to? Yes, he, he, was, he was ready for a little place. I told him it doesn't matter with me because uh, it would have been new no matter where I would have gone. Right. Uh, you know, it was. Uh, He'll appreciate this. The mayor of Teleco took that to most of the UT ball games and had 50 car line tickets. Oh. The mayor's family loved that. Oh, yeah. 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 That Oh, that's where, yes, listening to ball games with my dad when I was about 12 years old. Yeah, listening to John Moore, absolutely. Dad would have sweat right here. He was so nervous. Because, <laughs> you know, we weren't always on TV. A lot of times we were listening to it on the radio. And uh, those are some of my fond memories of my dad. I, was I wish I would have had fun watching sports with them. I was busy fighting <laughs> the system. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing that I forgot to mention, and I think it's a, it's a strong point, uh, the French like to, to eat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we like to get around the table. We like to visit with each other. We like to talk. That's that's the, the social time for the family. So here I was struggling, trying to get separated 
or six o'clock, but one of them had cheerleading practice, and one was one, and that was my And I said, so when? When are we going to have a meal around the table? <laughs> and that's, that's what I miss. That's what I miss. Another thing, it makes you food. Well, we don't do that. We stretch the meal to last at least 40 minutes, 45 minutes, mm -hmm. around the table. But you, you pile everything on the plate, we, we yeah. spent half a day cooking it, and you eat it in, in 10 minutes, it's so anyway. You see? But this well, that's true, and if you get invited, oh, that's even, she said, it's, I've never known to sit just 45 minutes at the French table, it's usually at least an well, hour. Uh, but, but yeah, the, with your when, when you get invited, oh, that's a oh, yeah. three hour ordeal. Oh, yeah. I mean, Wedding, wedding, all the room on the table. They sing, they, they, they know tell how stories. Uh, yeah. But I'm going to admit, I still miss that. Yeah. I still miss that. Mm -hmm. And after going to a French wedding, my mom said, you've never been to a French wedding. And we were guests, our cousin, we're, we're our close cousins. Oh my gosh, it was incredible. It started on Friday evening and didn't end until Sunday afternoon. Uh -huh. oh, oh, like, this is awesome. awesome. I felt like I was in that movie, My Best Friend's Wedding, when everybody starts singing at the table. <laughs> That's what they did. They started singing and marching up and down. It was awesome. Wow. Please. Well, you slept at Well, we were back home about four in the morning. Oh, you were wow. dancing at three. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I said, Mama, this is the best wedding ever. Yeah. Well, that was an old fashioned wedding. Y'all yeah. ever been a photographer? <laughs> yeah, but it's, yeah, that, that, so that I miss, that I miss. I love that conversation about it. They say it's better for the digestion. <laughs> and we're getting ready to have uh, those cousins that we go stay with a lot, they're coming first time ever for our week of Thanksgiving. Oh, oh, oh. So I'm so excited, so oh, we'll be here from Monday to Monday, and so I'm trying to think of all these things to take to. So they've never been at our house. We thought, oh, Thanksgiving's the perfect place yeah, for family. Well, even here in America, from the time of my childhood to now, that table breaking of bread is gone. You know, I mean, when I was young, you know, we would stay till the ball game started. <laughs> you know, and, and it had to be the right ball game. We didn't watch Yankees. Play or whoever you know, well, there was there was a Tennessee or you know yes, at least yes, yes. you know, but now we can't even get all fifteen all family three. members in the same room. Well, that, yeah. We don't even build our rooms to accommodate the family. I was going to you know. say it takes a lot. Now I, I want to give it to Mama because she was one that's so cute. Like at a vacation, it was not by school Sunday school Sunday. We had a gathering, and Mama hit the ball. She went to third. Second, first, she went the total opposite. Everybody, I can still see the Jenkins twins just fall on the ground. Just just <laughs> but Mama has speed. Mama could fly. So Mama flew, but she flew. But I didn't know where. She yeah. didn't know where to go. But now I'm impressed because she's now watched football so much. She is very nervous over so Tennessee, like literally gets almost sick nervous. And she will call it the play. She'll say, what well, feeling? Like, Mom, I'm so impressed. She's like, yeah, sure. It's a little late. Yeah. I could have enjoyed it with my husband. And I could have enjoyed the, enjoyed the girls' uh, basketball involvement. And, uh, but I'm trying to enjoy the Grinch. Yeah, she's, she is. She's so born. I've made yeah. you know, I've she's, made going, she's going to North Carolina, and we're going to support our head you at uh, college yes, football game. So. Mm -hmm. she's, she's, but it, 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 all I miss, because I, I wanted to recant, I can't, you know, I was limited, uh, I was limiting myself, I was, anyway, we, we carry those things from, uh, from, you know, young, when we're young, we, we're raised a certain way, and it, it's hard to, to give up or to change. Anyway, we were wearing white gloves and we realized we didn't have to wear white gloves. <laughs> <laughs> we got pictures of my little sister, my middle sister, who was a tomboy, despised dresses. And, and I mean, there's pictures of her screaming and her mom made her put those white gloves on to go to church. It seems like that that she just had to get used to. Like, yeah, this is another example. My high heels 
to go to the grocery, local grocery store. <laughs> because the French well, would dress up. Well, I wish she had met my auntie. She lived in Monroe County. You would have got along with her. Really? She was a lady when she, the time she, she woke up, up and she went to bed. She looked yeah. like a lady. She's <laughs> out there. Old boys now, she looked like a lady. Yeah. <laughs> you just don't see the French in jogging. You know how little people do a lot now. Mm -hmm. Not the young people I have, perhaps. I'm talking about the truth. No, 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 it's no, no, it's pretty much going downhill. Too. It's uh, it is what it is. Uh, but anyway, um, I'm I'm just uh, glad to be in, in America. <laughs> Definitely, and uh, I appreciate all the kindness that was shown, and and it's uh, it's a good place to be. Thank you for taking the time to share your life.